Hello, my name is Jacob Lewis from Digital Fire Media. Um, today we're going to be showing you how to create a 3D perspective effect uh, generated from just a simple flat 2D image. Just one image, not multiple images, and everything is pretty much done within Photoshop and After Effects. So to get started, um, I took this one picture, we'll take a look at it. Uh, one day when the power was out of my house, I went outside, took a couple of pictures, and I think this is one of the guys that was working on the power lines that day. And so, just took, just took a couple shots around the house, and yeah. So, we're going to drop this into Photoshop. And the first thing we, we want to do is decrease the image size. Unless you're going to, like, make this into a big production, you don't really don't want to use the highest quality. Uh, the image is almost 5,000 pixels across, and if we're working with 1080p, that's almost a little bit, uh, it's a little bit too big. Now, given if you're zoomed in all the way in here, that might benefit you to have all those pixels. Yet in this tutorial, I'm gonna I'm gonna decrease it down to 2,000. So it's a little bit smaller. It will still get the idea out of it. Now to create this into a 3D world from just a simple 2D image is actually simpler than you might think. Uh, we'll go up to the filter tab, click on a vanishing point. And over here, there's a create plane button. We're going to click on it and we're going to just create the floor. And we can extend it out. You can press control minus or control plus to zoom in or out. And click on the create plane again to we'll move the walls up and up. And we'll zoom in here, make the back wall, and finally the ceiling. Just like that. So we got our four walls and our ceiling, quote unquote. I mean, this is outside. Ideally, this effect works best on, on an indoor setting or in an alley scene. Not necessarily out in the wild, mainly because there's a lot of objects that aren't flat, <laughs> like the trees. Uh, so if this were to work in a hallway, obviously this might work even better. In fact, it will work better. But this effect still looks pretty cool out here, so we're going to try it. Uh, so once you've already done that, we're going to go to this drop-down menu. We're going to click Export for After Effects, or a .vpe. We're going to go to our folder. We're going to create a folder named Vanishing Point. And we're going to name it Vanish. Save it. Now you'll notice it takes a while to save. Depending on your Vanishing Point, how deep it is, the size of your image, and all that, it's got to generate these, these other sub-images that create your size, your ceiling, your floor, your back. Everything like that. So we'll just wait a second for it to finish. And there we go. It's done. We can just push OK up here and we'll minimize that. We'll go over to After Effects. And within After Effects, we don't even need to create a new composition because it'll create a composition for us. We're going to go to File, Import, Vanishing Point, .vpe. And we're going to go to that vanishing.vpe we're going to double click on it and everything loads in we get we've got our sides and if actually if we look in our this folder the vanishing point folder it has the five sides that were generated from uh, this side of the road and that side of the road and the the road itself <laughs> in the back of the road and of course the the trees above. So I loaded them all in here and to create a composition as well called vanishing.vpe. We're going to double click on it and here it is. Now there's two things wrong with this right now. First off it's rotated obviously. Oops. And second of all it's not in 1080p, it's not in 720p, it's in the resolution that we uh, set up right here it's in the 2000 by 1329 so if we go to the composition settings 
You'll, you'll see that, 2,000 by 1329. So obviously, if your image was almost 5,000 pixels wide, your composition size would be almost 5,000 pixels wide. So unless you were producing a 5K movie, you, you probably want to decrease this. We'll just take it to 1920 by 1080. There we go. And then all these clips you'll notice are parented to this parent null object. So we're gonna open up the position by pressing P and holding shift, we're gonna push R for rotation. And when we have the rotation or the orientation um, and the position up, we're going to just mess with the Z axis to align it. And that looks pretty good, 300. And we'll zoom out till it looks appropriate. And that looks good. Now, because this is not a hallway, you'll notice that a little bit of distortion happens here around uh, around the, the driveway where it kind of bends up, which is kind of funny. Okay, so really cool thing that we can do with this effect is animate it. So we're going to animate the position and orientation and we'll drag these clips actually out to like six seconds and from this point on we'll, uh, we'll zoom it in a lot so like 5,000 and move it up a bit And we will rotate it just a tad, just to give it a little bit of an effect. So if I will render this off. And that looks pretty cool. Obviously, this is taken to the extremes where it looks pretty wacky. However, again, still looks pretty cool. Now, this was pretty easy to do. Now, you could, of course, take your camera, actually record this animation, or you walking backwards or forwards, however you do it, and then 3D track the whole scene and add elements into it, which, again, would be probably pretty easy. The advantage to this, though, is if you want to create a time freeze effect almost, because this would be super, super easy. Uh, people in front of a green screen, even, uh, and they're just being placed into this scene. So we'll place some 3D text in here, just to sort of show that. We'll name it Vanishing Point. Drag it down here. And that really doesn't mean much right now, but we will make it a 3D object and press P. We're going to bring it closer a bit. Negative 5,000. Actually, negative 6,000. And we will move it down. Actually, it might be too close, so we'll move it back a little bit. Oh, and there we go. You'll see how it intersects with the, well, the street, which is perfect. Because at this point, that means that this is touching the ground. Therefore, when we animate this, that will stick. So we'll rotate this so it lines up a little bit better. Move it up. So it's just barely sitting on the ground. And then what's very, very important is that this layer is linked or parented to the parent. So once you do that, everything will work. If you don't do that, it'll just sort of stay in its position. So make sure it's parented. Of course, you can increase the size of this. And you can create multiple.
So the final result that we have are here. Vanishing point, vanishing point, vanishing point, and vanishing point. So all these items are stuck to the ground, as you can see. And that wraps up today's tutorial. Again, um, this effect works better indoors where there's flat walls instead of trees. However, I, I had to take some pictures outside when the power was out, and I just thought this was a good idea. So, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below, and that's it. You guys have a great day. My name is Jacob Lewis from Digital Fire Media. 